Okay, so the reason I'm making this video is I was just thinking about, I was having a discussion um, with another Tumblr user about, like, um, what do you call, like, uh, this uh, misogyny that Shinji and Evangelion, like, has. And I was thinking about how that actually, and I was thinking more about how young boys and teenage boys have a, have often, I would call, like, a different type of misogyny that develops and solidifies into what an older man like Gendo versus Shinji would have if they continue down this sort of path of sexism and becoming kind of what our society sees as a man, which includes often being abusive, being sexist. Um, so what I was thinking about, okay, so this person was, okay, so one thing that I think I was thinking about is how, like, Shinji, like, I think a lot of boys and teenage boys have what I was calling, like, a reactive misogyny. So, like, okay, so, like, with Shinji, for example, you know, he's really angry when, like, Asuka's, like, rejecting him, and so he strangles her, which is really horrible and horrible. That's a really extreme example, but there's, like, a lot of smaller examples of Shinji being kind of reactive in his misogyny, like, you know, um... He expects Asuka to, like, help him constantly and, like, fulfill his desires and needs in this way. Same thing with Misato, okay? And I would argue Rei also, just in a more subtle way. But he doesn't expect that from, like, Kaji or, or Kensuke or Toji. Um, or Gendo, even! Like, he wants Gendo to, like, give him more attention. But he doesn't get really take out anything. That's, like, the big thing, okay, is that you know, Shinji, even though Gendo's his abuser, I'm gonna go into that later, like, he never... He never takes it out on Gendo, ever. In the manga, he, like, tries to punch him, but that's, like, to me, out of character. Like, in the anime, at least, I'm gonna keep it to the anime and End of Evangelion and maybe a little rebuild. He never does. He never tries to hurt Gendo. It's always, ironically, Asuka, who is not to blame for his suffering. So that is... An okay, anyway, so reactive misogyny. So this idea I was thinking is, like, I think a lot of boys and teenage boys, they haven't solidified, like, this this worldview of male supremacy as much. Like, they have... There's male supremacy all around them, and they benefit from it, and, you know, they act in ways that are super harmful a lot of the time, but I think a lot of the time... Um, it's just not a solidified ideology. Like, I'm thinking about how when I was in high school, I had a friend who would, like, draw yaoi, and I would, like, show my friends. And actually, a lot of my male teenage friends were had, had no problem with it, and they were, like, curious about the art and stuff. Um, and I thought that was interesting. And, like, sometimes they would react negatively to certain things, but there wasn't as much of a sense in my mind that they had this like, ideology, because when I went, when I was older and I posted some stuff on Facebook that was, yeah, it was like, totally different. These were adult guys now, adult men now, and I remember getting into arguments with them about how it wasn't like porn, how it was different, because porn objectifies real women, and it treats women certain ways, and degrades women in a patriarchy, etc., and they were livid. I was getting attacked from all these people I once called, like, my friends, um, and they never did things like that when we were in high school. I'm not saying they weren't ever sexist, but it was different, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, so comparing, like, Shinji, who is a sort of reactive misogyny, he does certain things in certain situations, and he, he has this culture around him where he can take advantage of the male power he has over girls, even his age or sometimes even older. Um, then you compare that to Gendo, who is a nihilist and bitter and unfeeling and uses women like Ritsuko and her mother and, and kills Ritsuko and lets and drives her mother to suicide um you know he and I would argue kind of uses me so he manipulates her so you have someone like Gendo who like sees women as tools okay and like and his hatred toward them and toward humanity is solidified into this bitterness and it kind of reminds me also of okay so think about Nerd culture. Male nerds. I've heard people make the argument, and I think there's some truth to this, that a lot of male nerds were rejected a lot in high school. You know, they weren't popular, um, the girls they liked maybe weren't interested in them. I'm not saying that's true of all nerds, but there's a lot of that. And so instead of... So I think what happens a lot of the time when they get older is when they were younger, they would be reacted to that, and they might have had moments of sexism or done sexist things. But then when they became adults, there's this resentment of women and blame of women for their problems. Um, and I think another thing is the blame part, okay? Because you have someone like Shinji, this is what I mentioned earlier, been abused by Gendo. Neglect is abuse, and Gendo's done other shit that's horrible. 
Um, but instead of getting angry as much at Gendo and trying to get back at Gendo or even stop Gendo, instead he strangles Asuka. He hate you know, he he hurts Asuka, he judges Misato, he takes it out on women. Um, and so think about that with okay, that's really common, okay, that's what I'm trying to say, is boys who've been victimized by men will become those men when they get older. Like, um, I have a friend, a male friend, who was abused, he's a former friend, he was abused at a young age by a parental, a father, by a stepfather, basically, kind of, it was like his mom's girlfriend, or boyfriend, um, and he recently, he and I had an interaction that was abusive, like, he didn't hurt me, but he grabbed me first he right anyway so there's a thing that happened so um anyway in and when you talk to him or when you would talk to him about the abuse at the hands of his mother's ex-boyfriend he wouldn't call it abuse he would he thought oh he was trying to make me a man he was just hard on me to make me a man and so you see that you know you have male victims of abuse, and we don't talk a lot about how male victims of abuse might experience that abuse and react to it differently. Not that women don't become abusers later if they're abused, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying there's this cycle, I think, of abusive older men, or sexist or horrible older men that treat boys and young and teenagers like garbage. It might not even always be, like, physical abuse, but, like, just putting them down, treating them like they're girl-like or not manly enough or whatever. And instead of being like, wow, that's shit, I don't want to be like that, instead it's like, oh, let me find someone I have more power over who I can do the same thing to. And this doesn't just stop at, you know, men. This is like a thing that's really common. Like, historically, you know, you have people, groups of people who are marginalized who instead of, okay, so like, for example, white laborers, you know, white working class people often are racist or sexist or both. Because instead of being like, wow, I live in a capitalist society that hates me and rich people suck, instead it's easier to be like, oh, it's those women, it's those those pe people of color that are ruining things for me and taking our jobs. It's easier to attack people who are weaker than you and take it out on them and blame them than to actually be like, wow, this person with more power than me is abusing me and is or exploiting me or whatever the case may be this is really common okay so I think this happens with boys and teenagers also so if they have been abused or whatever um by older figures often men not always um instead of being like wow looking at why is this happening like why did this happen to me who ha what happened to me instead and it, because it's dangerous to get angry at that person, right, that has power over you. Instead, I'm going to take it out on people who are weaker than me. So I think that that's sort of what happens with Shinji, and I think that happens with a lot of boys and young men. And then, like I said, there's this other thing of, like, expecting this... Ex and this is, I think, very common of, like, the reactive misogyny I was talking about. Expecting a certain accommodation from women and girls, ex if your mother or female friends and girlfriends, expecting, like, a certain accommodation from them of your needs and feelings that's unreasonable like Shinji has and then also like um that the re the not the 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 non-realization of those expectations developing into a greater more entrenched bitterness and misogyny toward women like I was calling it before like a strategic misogyny but I call it a worldview like a misogynistic worldview it, you you get ideas about this is how women are as a whole like really negative ideas this is how women treat me this is how women have advantages over me like MRAs I think are a good example of this this is how women are cheating the system this is how women have cheated me this is how women have made my life bad this is how women blah blah blah. And so I think you go from like the Shinji era to the Gendo era if you don't change. You know what I mean? If you don't scapegoat women for whatever issues you've experienced or whatever. So then you have this sort of solidified worldview about women and how you have to have power over them and you want to degrade them and you want to actively abuse them or actively assert power over them in various ways and it becomes a more like... It's instead of becoming reactive, like, okay, I have this experience, I'm going to react because I live in a patriarchy and these ideas are floating around. Instead, it becomes like, this is women. This is who women are. I have enough experience through what I've been exposed to, what women have done to me, 
to say they're crazy, they do this to me, they, they're all bitches who will strip their divorcee, the, the divorced men that they, or the men they've divorced with everything they're worth because women are sneaky and conniving and they lie and they're out to get me and they hate me. So then it becomes more of like this, this deeply misogynistic worldview that's more complete and full and I would argue dangerous because, especially because men, adult men, have more power to enact that ideology than a young boy or teenager. So yeah, those are just some ideas, and I look really terrible. But anyway, yeah.